the problem of time lag is almost as important as in the context of love and romance. You might have heard of this old song which says that dard ab ja ke utha chot lage der hui problem of time lag or a famous uh, galib couplet humne mana ke tagaful na karoge lekin khak ho jayenge hum tumko khabar hone tak you will get killed the policy will get killed before you come out with your data sets so please do take that there is a cost that the country is paying for your passive approach to compiling, producing data sets, which as far as we know are hard data, better quality data, and uh, all computerized now. There is no excuse. Yeah, please. Sir, I want to make, uh, you know, the government uh, had realized that there is a need for data. And that is why at the time when they framed the task book, which was very surprising to me, they added three issues. One, that they said that impact assessment, so they, they want the task committee to give its recommendations on the impact assessment, and the methodologies and everything. So that was one point. The second was that they looked at the, tra the revenue forecasting, and which is a very, very important thing, because if you see, India till date does not seem to have a very, very elaborate or credible or uh, focused uh, forecasting and the, ex the, the reason is that even in our budget, uh, we continue to give one figure on direct taxes, so much of the revenue that we are likely to get on the indirect taxes, some revenue, just one figure, not the itemized, which you find in the SARS report. SARS started doing it 2095, 1995, and how quickly they got onto that and started making use of the data for also telling the, the, the populace that if I am bringing this particular uh, tax uh, measure or I'm removing a particular tax regime uh, measure, what impact it is going to have on my review collection, and which is a very, very important thing to the governance issues. So that, that was uh, you know, the second part. The third thing that they also mentioned, and we have written quite elaborately, on the predictive analysis. How do you use the data to predict it? Now, ta many tax administrations have moved to not only prediction, but they have moved to prescription. What do you prescribe if you have this particular data analysis, which is going to be the fourth avatar after data, then analysis, then uh, uh, prediction, and then the prescription. So it's not that the government had not realized. The government had realized. It is just that the tax department has made a very, very slow beginning on the whole thing. Uh, for some reason, and I have been part of, and I've met Mr. Arvindwadi also at various times. I remember that when I was developing some forecasting model for NIP, along with NIPFP, what kind of de problem that I had. I don't have the, had, had the quarterly data, which you can allow to build and predict uh, on a quarterly basis, what kind of collections you are going to make on the direct taxes, on the corporate tax, on the personal income tax, etc. And I remember once Mr. Uh, the the ex-finance minister, he asked me, can somebody do that? So I said, yeah, I'll do that. And the entire board said, why did you commit to something like this? I said, no, I do it, I just need a day's time to do that. And, it, it, and I did make one and gave it to him. So quite all right, you know, we, you can tell them what exactly will be. And the difference is not more than 1% or 1.5% of what you actually predict and what you actually get. So if you have the data, if you do that, all these things will happen and you can move on to a lot more quantitative. What we are talking about evidence-based, trying to, uh, you know, come to a particular taxpayer, which Sudhanshu also mentioned in some way. Uh, you can do all those things, like saying that this is going to happen, and this is what you are predicting, and this is how I'll do that. So that's why, I mean, unfortunately, we can keep, uh, you know, criticizing the tax department, but uh, the problem is that there are many more things that has to happen. And there are a large number of officers who can be weaned away and uh, start uh, being utilized from this side. Uh, on the many of these uh, so-called per peripheral issues which have become very, very central. 
that's the so the point is when does the tax department take that initiative to do that i you know i one opportunity which i'm uh, seeing fast uh, slipping out of the uh, you know both the tax uh, administration is uh, they could have done and which i said in the morning more understood what is the tax uh, tark report is emphasizing and recommending rather than looking at it in a very very selective manner and saying that this is what i have done this is what i have done which is very very facile not the really deep uh, rooted reforms which is which is what is required yeah yeah i think you have put the your real issue which is it is not uh, enough to have few good officers you have to have the necessary systemic approach in order to uh, get this entire data production and analysis going. We have no excuse, as Piketty said, that many other countries that are democracies, much smaller than ours, with much less resources, are producing this kind of data set as well as complementary analysis while we are failing. So in international eyes, we really do not have a valid set of excuses. But we hope, now that you have indicated TARC has made the recommendations, we do have very good set of officials and very well-meaning people. And probably internally they can push the system into a certain commit set of commitment and discipline which will produce uh, this very much uh, re required need for of the country. As I said, you cannot sit idly, as Huxley said, you cannot jump while you are falling. So we can either go down or we have to really uplift ourselves. Okay, with your permission, shall we close the session at six o'clock as requested? Thank you. Um, I'd like to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. I, on behalf of ICRIA, would like to extend our gratitude to the Prosperity Fund UK for having funded this very important study. Our sincere thanks to Dr. Ishar Judge Aluwalia for taking time out of her busy schedule and writing the foreword for this edited volume. I would also like to thank Dr. Kathuria for his unstinting support. My deepest sense of gratitude to Mr. Rajiva Ranjan Singh for being the anchor to this project and keeping it all together, and personal thanks to him for mentoring both Stuti and me. Our appreciation to all the authors for their valuable contributions to this book and to LexisNexis, our publishers, for racing against time along with us. A big thank you to all the chairs, panelists, speakers, and to the audience for making this event a success. No vote of thanks is ever complete without a special mention of ICRIER's backbone, our administrative team, Manmeet Ji, Neha, Rajesh, and all our support staff. And last but not the least, we are very grateful to Mr. Rajkumar Shahi, our one-man IT army, for helping out with all the technical details. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Yes, yes.